Hello and welcome to my channel. This is Darcy's Misadventures with Mixed Media. And we are moving on to more layers um, on our, I'm going to call it our own personalized design papers. Because that's basically what you're making, is you're making your own designer papers uh, with me as we add layers. And I want to remind you, use what you have. If you don't have inks, you can mix water and acrylic to make an ink. I mean, it's not going to be a distress ink, but it still will spread ink and be more transparent and, you know, be fun to use. So, that is my reminder to you. And somewhere in this pile is the one where I put the, um, the stencil on with you guys, but I also have some here that, um... All right, see this stencil didn't show up. Some of these showed up, some of these didn't. So uh, I sprayed inks and then laid the stencils on them. All right, this one got a little bit of the stencil showing. This one, not so much. It's a hit or miss kind of a thing. But this is what I do is I usually will just stack them up. Okay, if there's paint on your stencil, you do have a chance of ripping your paper and getting paper on your stencil, just be forewarned. Uh, and that one didn't really get anything on it. Like I said, it's hit or miss. Uh, that one. Nope. But I think because there was already like a thick amount of paint on there, it does work better on papers that just have ink and not the paint, as far as I can tell. Let's see. What about that one? That one is not quite dry, but that didn't work either. Huh. But, you know, you got to try because you never know. Okay, this was a fail. So just so you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. That, I don't see the stencil on that one either. It's also still wet. And it takes them a lot longer to dry when you do this. But when you get the results, it's really cool. Like the one that I did show you yesterday, I did get results on. And I let these sit overnight. I'm not quite sure what the deal is with them and why. I didn't get any of the stencil. This one's still wet, too. All right, so book pages. You can see I've got some book pages here. Uh, I did forget to mention book pages. I mentioned a lot of different kinds of papers, but forgot to mention book pages. Yep, none of these. All of these are still damp after sitting all night, and none of them seem to have gotten any of the stencils. Um, the stencil on them. Not sure why. But, you know, it's, it's worth a try. I thought for sure that one would. But I don't see it on that one either. Hmm. No, nope, not that one either. And then this is the, st the stencil I used originally on a different paper. Huh. Well, now you know. It's a hit or miss with this technique of using the stencils in between. And, oh, here's this one. See, so it did show... A little bit on here you can see that stencil did come through that's the one we did yesterday all right so yeah I did some book pages and so all I did yesterday was I used the scraper and paint or I sprayed ink like this one I sprayed ink through the stencil and then turned the stencil upside down to get more ink on that one added just scrape use my you know scraper and paint to get first layers Sometimes a second light, you know, just a couple different colors at least on some of them. Uh, like this one, I'm leaving as it is because I have something specific I want to do with this and I don't want to cover up that background too much. So there may be a few that I just do the one layer on and that's okay. And then some of them I may add two, one more layer, two more layers. I don't know, until I like it. So, uh, so this is where we are. They're damp. <laughs> Oh, and you don't want to, you want them to be dry before you put them together, but this is okay, because if I'm, if I use, some of them are going to be used for collage, so we're not overly concerned. And I knew this was a potentiality, but I set them on top of each other anyway. So, I did add some tur turquoise to uh, some of these, but just using the scraper, nothing special. All right, so today I'm getting out some um, stencils. Stencils are a little bit more backgroundy things and whatnot. So I'm gonna grab some fun stencils. 
So for this part, you have options. You could just go straight to your inks. Permanent is better because you're possibly going to be adding some more um, layers that are wet. And when you're doing that, anything that's not permanent will be moving about the cabin. So if you do not want things to move about the cabin, then you want to use permanent ink for this layer. And also paint would be permanent. I don't think I want or the bright green. All these colors do work to some degree. Just so I've got Verse Fine Claire. Those are my favorites. Uh, there's also the archival um, Tim Holtz archival or Wendy, you know, the Ranger Ink archival ones are also good to use at this point. So let's see. This one, I'll use some of this Chianti here. And I do have some brushes now if you did want to use like your uh, distress inks you could just know that they're gonna move they're gonna move around so I'm just gonna take one of my favorite stencils here and uh, just go through in some places I'm not covering the whole thing I'm just getting a little here and there especially where I see it's white or a different color, like over the turquoise will be good here, is where I'm trying to focus my attention. So that brings that dark violet in. So it's not the exact same color, but it's close. Man, it feels dark in here. I have all my lights on. And it's sunny outside. Well, it's, yeah. The sky is blue. I don't know why it feels so dark in here. Um. So yeah. So I'll do... A few of these let's see this one I would probably use turquoise on or orange but I don't have I do have a permanent orange mm, let's see monarch orange I want the spiced oh, there we go I want this orange blossom is what I want and I use I have like a brush of these for like each color and then I have like a separate brush for the um, oxides because you really shouldn't mix your oxides in your... Did I mention this is one of my favorite stencils? So you may see me use this one a lot. Uh, this is a stencil from PM Artist Studio. I call it medallions. Because that's what it makes me think of. But it's oriental lattice if you're looking for it. And this one is a 9 by 12 size. Um, this is one of the ones that the sizes are different. The sizes of the circles, are, th I think, are different depending on the size of the stencil you get. Not all the stencils are like that. Some of them, you know, they're the same size pattern no matter what size. So, so like, if it's a stencil that, like, this pattern is the same size, no matter if I get a 5x7, 8x10, or 9x12, I get the 9x12. So it fits on all my plates. Um, but if it's a pattern that changes sizes, like like this one, the pattern itself is larger the smaller the stencil you get. So then I get, you know, as many as I can. <laughs> I get as many sizes as I can afford, you know. Alright, turquoise. And I'm going to make an unusual choice for this. I can find my green. One should be green. I'm going to use this uh, Shady Lane, which is kind of like an olive green. And just see how that looks. Because I kind of like... I'm not going all over, though. I'm, I'm going, like, corners and maybe a little bit up the middle. Just a hit and a... So it, it's just a hint of it back there. I'm not, I don't cover the whole thing. Why? I don't know. Because somebody else didn't, and I like the look of it. It was probably Miami Small Art. Martha she she probably and it's gonna take a little longer to dry because it's on the acrylic paint and Versafine is for porous and uh, so I just need to let that dry this was like a thinner um I don't know it seems to dry faster on this than on this but then again maybe that was because that was the no that dried but well, that was on some gesso so it'll dry faster on gesso too um hmm do I want to do green on this one? Maybe. Maybe I'll do green on this one too. I think brown though. Yeah, brown. How now, brown cow? Let's do the fallen leaves. 
we're going for fall colors right now right so now I'm just kind of doing the same thing just getting some areas I don't know where you know depending on what I use it on it may be on a card on a tag who knows I don't know do you know I don't if I don't know how will you know where's the blue one the blue bluish green I don't know so I want the teal warm breeze is kind of a turquoise turquoisey color FYI so this one because I'm picking a color that's already in there I am just kind of hitting where the orange is just to bring that color throughout this is a step and repeat pattern so I should be able to just find the last hello I mean the paper is bigger than the, the stencil is bigger than the pattern I could have just lined it up better there is that you know on on the paper but I don't know that takes forethought and planning and I don't do that all the time there we go so it's lighter in some spots, darker in some spots. That one's more all over, but it's not all over evenly. Do you know what I mean? It's lighter there, darker there. You just get more interest like that, in my opinion. That's just my opinion. So I'm going to do a bunch of these, add some stenciling to a bunch of these, and I'll be right back. Hopefully you're doing the same thing. I mean, you can pause while you do that if you want to. All right, so whether I'm adding orange, like the, the color that's already in there to some of the white spots, or covering all of it, I'm unifying the piece. And you also, I wanted to remind you that you don't have to stick with just one color either. So I just did orange in the rest of this stencil, and I, I did put some brown on this orange to take it back a notch. And then I'm going to um, go through the stencil as well, where the orange is, just to take that orange down a little bit more so now this is kind of orangey out there and it's brown on the orange and it's all one stencil all over it looks kind of cool and it kind of unifies it makes it feel more like one piece instead of like a little bit more random now this is um this one has like a lot of stark contrast because the orange against the cream and I, I would probably add some more gesso to this one. That that's just my personal opinion. Just you'll see. We'll see what happens in, in the next layers. And this one I did brown just to neutralize it a little bit. That one may also get more paint on top of 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 the stencil. Uh, any of these layers that we're doing, if I did the first layer as the first layer, that doesn't mean you have to do that layer as the first layer. This doing the stenciling, you could have that be your first layer. The scraping the paint on could be your third layer. Any any of these things that I'm doing can be any of the layers. So you know, sometimes maybe a little stenciling helps you break the blank page because sometimes the hardest thing is just getting something on there. Maybe you want something more pretty than just splotches of paint on there. But then again, the splotches of paint on there are kind of cool. So there's something to say for that. And don't be afraid to use your smaller stencils on a bigger piece. Like this is um, a tube. You know, I'm probably this is probably going to be a page in a journal most likely. And so I'm just taking one of my smaller stencils and just kind of get in the corners with it just kind of flipping it every which way it doesn't have to be lined up I'm just kind of grabbing the corners and where it meets up it it won't matter it doesn't have to be perfect um that's all I'm saying and even if I have a spot like this and I want to cover it I can just go across like that where I want it so I'm just doing kind of like a little border and a stencil like this is good because it doesn't have to line up perfectly to still have a lot of interesting things happening. So don't don't be afraid to just move your stencil around and use it however you wish. And here's another example. Um, so this stencil, I could use it just as this stencil, but instead I am just taking the center pieces and just stenciling the very center pieces and just doing an all over, um, whoops, that gets a little caught. The littler ones are a little bit easier. <laughs> there we go. And just kind of doing it all over. Some of them overlap, some of them don't. So good in the neighborhood. 
some of them are smaller some of them are larger makes for interest on the page and so and I'm doing it kind of light even though I'm using black um, and if black ink is the only ink you have that's fine use that or use like I said you could use paint I uh, probably should show you how because uh, not getting your paint super sticky is I mean super thick is is kind of one of the hardest things when it comes to using paint so uh, you grab yourself uh, a sponge preferably is is the easiest thing and uh, you don't really want to use the fluid necessarily for this um, I will use what will I use I'll pull in some of this pearlescent blue this uh, what is it pearlized crystal blue not for this one though <laughs> maybe for this orange one just because it is opposite on the color wheel from orange and will be somewhat close to setting and pull out a lot there it's all good and I'll just you're gonna take some on your sponge you're gonna take some off your sponge and then you're gonna dab it in there you're not gonna go crazy and uh, you're just gonna have fun with it and just move things around if you need to not sure that that was the right color but that's okay because we can always add more layers on top of that if we don't like it we can add a layer scrape sprayer or scrape some more um gesso or white paint or whatever but yeah you just want to make sure that your paint is not thick on your sponge find whatever sponges you have cheap sponges and and uh whatnot um, Alright, so I've done a bunch of stenciled ones. I'm kind of getting bored with stenciling. And uh, I didn't show you one of these other techniques yesterday that I could have. Oh, I've got a couple of those. Uh, so I'm going to grab myself a plastic bag. Uh, you can use a plastic bag or paper bag or whatever crunches. Or if I don't have a plastic bag, then it's not going to be a plastic bag. It's going to be... A plastic bag is preferable because the paint... You can reuse it and reuse it because the paint won't soak into it so much. But if you're using like this, well, this is what strength tissue, but you know, tissue paper or something like that. I'm going to use a shiny side so that it will hopefully give me a little bit more um, wrinkliness. Uh, I don't think I'll use this turquoise. I wanted brown, but it's not in my line of sight at the moment. And remember yesterday I talked about this drop paper. It's starting to look really cool. I mean, and it's it's gone dark to light to dark. Kind of really cool. All right, uh, I do want to spread this out some. I don't know. Use your finger. Just spread it out a little bit. Just so you're not getting like a giant blob on there. And then you're just going to take your wrinkly paper and just kind of dab it on there. As, as much or as little as you like. So that's and you want to turn it so you're not getting the same shape everywhere I'm just lightly touching it and that is giving me some nice texture on there let me do that on this one too this needs something especially where there's like uh, a lot of one color across there that just might feel like too much it'll help break it up and it'll go on the other parts too so that also is a way to help kind of unify your pieces let's see anything else I want that color on anything, anything well I don't know about that but blue and turquoise works that that started out with a stencil so like I said you can start and how did I do this well some of you know some of you might not so I will show you how I did that uh, let's go ahead and do this I think and I'm gonna grab my black don't know why and just gonna spray that through there. Not perfectly, but you know, hit or hit 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 on it. And then I'm gonna lift it up carefully, set this aside to dry. So now I've got that layer in there. And just needs to dry. And then what's on the stencil here, I will take and take this piece and lay it on there. And we'll get a hit or miss of that background stencil there it gets dark it's darker in some places lighter in some places and I'm okay with that which is why I like that technique there's still some on there I could go ahead and spray it with water 
you know, if I knew where my water was. Water would be nice. I know I say that sometimes when I'm looking for water. Some of you know the reference. Most of you probably don't. Not everybody watches SpongeBob. There you go. I got my continuous sprayer, Mr. Sprayer thing there. Just sprayed that just a little bit. And just take that one and lay that on there. Just don't move it once it's on there. And then that'll just be more background. So it'll definitely have to dry. There's still more on there. I'm just going to take it and press it on my backdrop here to just add a little bit of black grunginess to the black and now my hands are covered in ink and maybe you want to wait since that was permanent ink you might I think it's, well that was the dilutions let's put it that way so you might want to wipe your stencil off from that but it's okay it just it'll come off on another when I do my gel printing it'll come off at some point it's, it's with the paint and be grungy interest so that's okay all right what else do we have here this one's pretty dark. I don't mind that it's dark. I could add black to it to make it darker or um, because white ink is not going to work as well. If I wanted to really make it lighter and brighter, I could add uh, white or cream. This one is maple, yellow, red. It's, it's a cream. It's a cream type color. I don't want to lose. Oh, and it's really close to that background. I don't want to lose like some of this stuff here. So I want to kind of be mindful. Of, of where the paint goes. So what do I want to do? I don't know. We'll just, oh, I didn't spread it out that time, but that's okay. I'm going to test it out over there. I just want it really just light in some places. Super light. I'm like just, I can always press harder, but the lighter I go, the more control I, well, you know, control is elusive. There, there's no control when it comes to paint. Paint's gonna do what paint's gonna do. Turning it so I don't get the same shape every time. Okay, there we go. I just did it really light. Just gives it, brightens it up a little bit. Ooh, here we have another page that is, could be a page in a journal. Or I could use it as something else. Who knows? Just gonna grab the rest of this and you don't even see it. Not right now, you don't just little blobs of it here and there all right uh oh and then stamping we can move on to stamping if you have mixed media stamps now is a great time to pull those out or even like some text stamps text stamping is good at this point because then when you add other layers the text stamping will be sort of in the back that is, and it doesn't have to go upside right. This is just papers from a Sudoku. I'm just kind of gently, does it even, oh, shows a little bit here and there. Here, here and there it shows up a little bit because I didn't do it like super, um, as I have less ink on there, I press harder. And it still is really light just here and there but it adds a little something to the background I don't generally do a script stamp like this on a book page because we've already got script on a book page right that already has script adding more script is just gonna make it a little too busy uh, same with that that's already got script well if I added script to this one it would be cursive because there's print in the background there now do I have a cursive I don't know I have music I have oh, I like this for fall um, what is this called? You know what this is called. Houndstooth. Somebody was already yelling it, and you're like, yay, she got it. <laughs> houndstooth. I think of houndstooth for fall. I mean, houndstooth can be any time of year, but for some reason, I guess because of a tweed, I do kind of, all right, I want to do it this way again. So I'm just lining it up. Just kind of get my corners more. And then I'll come up to this corner. And just get the corners a little bit more. And it just gives it, well, that one all the way up to the middle, but that's okay. Um, just kind of press the middle. Just to uh, get it an all over. And uh, not all over, a uh, hit or miss kind of a pattern happening. 
with that. I love a houndstooth. I don't know. Do you like houndstooth? I love me houndstooth and harlequin. Um, those are some of my favoritest. So we have a lot of blank spaces on the corner. So that's where I'm trying to kind of focus this around the edges. Doesn't have to be around all the edges because I might come in with another stamp and like a, I might come in with a Harlequin and, and get all the places I miss. And the Harlequin I have is probably double or triple the size of, let's see, maybe triple the size of one of those little hounds too. So it'll be a bigger pattern. And that's how I like to do it. So we have like the small pattern. If I bring in the hound's tooth, it'll be a medium. I know I have um, some hound's tooth. I said hound's tooth. I meant harlequin. Harlequin. That's what I meant. Now I can come in with the same brown, which would be perfectly fine. Um, or I can come in with a color that's already on the page. I probably wouldn't bring in another color. Um at this point because we've got yellows oranges and browns and blacks and whites and uh three three colors is a, is a good rule of thumb plus your black and white you know for for a page if you don't want it to look too overwhelming uh, i did not get enough i don't know all right and it's re oh that's right i did orange on this one i'm like why is it not coming out as dark as the other one because you did orange blossom that's why but that's okay but that, that just made that one that much more subtle, too. So that's a small pattern. That's a medium pattern. If I want to come in here with a, a large pattern, I would probably come in with my rosette. One of my favorites. I don't know what color is already on here. Oh, ooh, a little burgundy would be okay. Because burgundy is right next to orange with a red. It's a reddish color, so... And I'm going to stamp off the first so we get a little bit more of a ghost stamp. And I'm not stamping super hard. And try not to make a perfect pattern either, but there we go. So there we go. We have our small, medium, and large pattern. And that's how I personally like to mix patterns. And I think I learned that from Mondo on Project Runway. Oh, I used to be so impressed with how he mixed patterns in such a fun in clever way um in colors he wasn't afraid to make colors and patterns and i just admire him okay um so yeah i'd say this page is done yeah i would say this page is done it's ready to do what i want to do with it and that was just the the two layers kind of because it's the 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 gesso well, three if you count the gesso as one layer the inks is one layer and then the stamping as a layer so that's three layers and that one's done so like I said, you could add as many layers or as little layers as you want. So here, if I wanted to do stamping, whoops, I would probably need to use paint. I don't want to use paint on my stamps because then I have to wash them or use a really dark color. Like um, I've got Eddie's stamp here from pmartiststudio.com. Um, I'm going to go off the side with it a little bit. And it's going to be kind of more like uh, the, the arches, rainbows. Still kind of looks like the thing, but that's okay. So <laughs> These do hold a lot of ink, uh, these foamy stamps. There we go. I could go all the way around the edges if I wanted to. Could even just use like little one here and there just kind of press it down and make them I don't know now they're just kind of shadowed back there uh, I like this one it's kind of a paisley so especially on one that is pretty plain I would probably be more likely to use this one on but not necessarily I mean let's pull out this one's not plain. I'm not sure that I would have picked black for this one, but we're going to anyway. Oh, you know, sometimes things just get better if I want it all over. Um, I wish that I could match this one up. I think that would match up. See, now I would have to go the other way to match it up. Because I'm pretty sure that it is a... Yep, that should match up there. 
and let me lift this side. I mean, you don't have to match it up perfectly, but it is, it is, uh, it does look like it's supposed to be a matching up kind of one, which is cool. So that's an all over paisley mist in some spots. That's okay. I'm okay with that. Um, I don't know that I love this one. I would probably push it back with, uh, that needs to dry a little bit and then I will, I'll show you what I'll do with that. All right, let's see. What else do we have here? Oh, I wouldn't mind some of this here and there. If I can get it in there. Just adding. And also like a, a plaid or a hound's tooth with like a florally one. That works too. In my, in my opinion. That's just my opinion. Some people do struggle with mixing patterns. Um, and that's okay. It doesn't come natural to everybody. Uh, let's see. This one's got... It had our first layer with the paints. I added some inks. Then it's got the, the paper... The, you know, crinkly things. And... No, I don't love the colors. But... Here's the thing. If I use my leaf die cutter with this, they'll be really great leaf colors. So... Especially with the brown splodginesses and whatnot. So... And, you know, we're using these for all kinds of things, including die cuts, collage crumbs, collage fodder, collage, uh, pages, ephemera, pockets, all the things. Uh, let's see. I want a little something smaller on this. Oh, I want another pat. I want... It's okay to leave these blank spaces. You should. It's really a good idea to leave some of those blank spaces. This is actually nice as it is, too. All right. So a lot of these two two layers was good. Okay. Uh, I want something more bold on this. What do I want? This is kind of a large pattern, but I kind of want to go bigger for a pattern. Does that make any sense? But I could even go a little bit smaller. All right, let's bring some turquoise back into this. All right, so a little bit of... I'm going to go around the edge there. Anywhere. Well, you know, I like overlapping patterns, so it's okay. But I don't want it on there perfectly. I'm just kind of... There we go. We just got it here and there. And just added another layer. Did I move you guys? I might have moved you guys. Whoops. I don't even see my shirt. <laughs> That's not what you're here to see. All right, and then this one I haven't added anything to because this one had the gesso and then it had inks, I think. And then I had put the stencil on top of the inks and that one actually worked. Um, plus, these little folds under here come through on some of these papers. And so I, turning my papers helps to make it so it's not just one straight line. Uh, what do I want? I think I want just kind of a little bit of a reddish brown in there. Should we just bring in some of that? stamp that we had. Try it on the edge if you're not sure. Just the ghost stamp of it. The ghost stamp of it all. There's, it's smaller circles than the big circles that's on there. So now I would probably want to bring in something uh, more linear straight lines because I've got circles and circles. Um, also use what you have. Uh, maybe you've got like some of this lying around. How I like to use this is I will spray some ink on there and then just kind of pick some of that up like that. It, it just, it's just different than a stamp would do um, like that. All right, I do that with bubble wrap sometimes too. And yes, I end up with a big mess back there, but that's okay. Uh, and then that will dry a little bit lighter, but now it's got something, another pattern. So that's got another layer. What about this one? Do we want to just see what we can get on here? We're getting a little bit. I like that. I like when I mix the colors on here even more, add a little metallics. It's all fun. Turn my papers so I get it a little bit differently each time. That got on the side there. I could use a little bit. I do try to line this up so they're straight up and down on the paper, which is kind of, you know, sometimes a little harder to do. Let's see. How about this? 
there's got to be a little bit left on there and this will come through to the other side so I don't well I could I could do it on both sides and it'll come through on the other I don't really want to rub it though because where it's wet over here I'll be rubbing so it just gives it that little little touch of something not an all over just a little touch of something and I do that with bubble wrap sometimes too of course you can use bubble wrap you know put paint on it and and stick the paint on there but you can also that feels kind of flat September hmm. okay it is September oops well, uh, let's see let's do the black and the reason I leave it laying down is because when you turn it over the wet ink is going to come up from in the middle and I just want some of the um I just well that did a little bit worse but that's all right that's grungy that's definitely grungy so if you're going for grungy that works really well all right let's get some darkness on this my old friend hello darkness my old friend so i'm just kind of kind of like you would a jelly plate you're just kissing the plate so then that just adds add some nice grunge if if you can't find the little or the big uh bubble wrap and you really like that or you can't find any bubble wrap uh, PM artist studio does have a stamp with all three sizes so there's that so now I'm just kind of like trying to use up what's on there it's not getting on there perfectly which I like that's a good thing but that's why I'm laying the whole thing down now because I can I can get away with it now because there's a lot less on there that definitely got more all over and I just use the black dilutions, black marble ink spray is what I used on that for that. Go ahead and take this one. It doesn't have to be straight on the bubble wrap because the bubble wrap doesn't have lines. I'll do a little bit on this one. Just grunge. It's just, a little, it's just getting a little specks of stuff now. Anything else? Here, need a little bit of black. I mean, you can add, black adds drama, and it's all good in the neighborhood. This, this one I did green, the green and turquoise and orange, orange and yellow. So yeah, that one definitely has more, it's got, no, did I use that turquoise? I can't remember. I think it was supposed to be turquoise, but there was a little brown in it, which made it a little bit more like an olive green. But I thought I used olive green on one of these, because I like olive green and teal together. And there's yellow and orange, which is four colors, but yellow and orange are almost the same color. Green and turquoise are like right next to each other as well. So that that's an instance where you can do four colors instead of three. <laughs> there's rules and then you break the rules. It's all good. It's all good in the neighborhood. This one definitely use. And that was with ink. If I wanted to do paint, I could totally do that. Um, paint, paint, just regular paint like you guys have. Let's do white paint. Oh, let's turn it over if we're going to do white. And check the camera. I've got some sky blue here. You can use any color you want. I'm using that one because it was there. <laughs> it was right next to me. That That is the whole reason. And then I'm just going to brush that on there. so that I don't have too heavy of a coat of it. And I think that color will work with this because I have a similar color on there already. Uh, it's not showing up too, oh, there, there it is, there. Looks like it's not really showing up much, is it? All right, so for more contrast, I just need not use, to not use the same color. That, that would be helpful. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I thought it was going to be, it is a little bit darker than what was on there, but it, it barely, barely showed. All right, I'm going to put a thicker coat on here. Just experiment, try different things, um, and we're not worrying about perfection. We, we don't, perfection is overrated. All right, this one, I just love it the way it is, but I'm just going to add a little bit of baby bubble wrap here and there 
Yeah, a little smushy bubble wrap some places. So there we go. That added another layer. I hope you guys can see that because now the sun is shiny, but it still feels dark in here where I am. We've got the turquoise and you know what? I don't care. I'm still going to add some of the light blue. Like I said, you can use just three colors and that's okay. If you know enough about color or you just, you know, have an eye for it, I guess, <laughs> you can do what you want. Um, there's a little bit of red going right through the middle there, which is fine. I could bring that elsewhere. Oh, there's some there too. Um, in the way back, there's probably some as well. So I'm not worried about repeating that again. So that, so, uh, let's see, does it do any better if we do it the other way? Because putting the paper on the bubble wrap, maybe my bubble wrap is just dead. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe it's me. I'm the problem. It's me. All right, so with inks, you lay the paper on the bubble wrap, but with paint, you want to lay the bubble wrap on, you know, push the bubble wrap on the paper to get a better print. Lesson learned. Like I said, you experience, you experiment, and that's how you learn these things. I wanted to do, um, let's see, maybe some regular size bubble wrap or something. Um, are you wanting to know if I could do paint with, with this? Probably. All right, got some turquoise paint here. I'm just gonna paint it randomly on there. Don't need to cover the whole thing. It's getting kind of thick there. And then, oh, yep, that worked. It gets a little blodgy in places, which is okay. That just adds to the texture, she says. <laughs> uh, did I have two of these? I guess I have two of these because this one I put the stencil on. Hmm. And that was like a mix of turquoise with some other. That did not show up. Well, it's there, but it doesn't show up. It's not there enough. Um, this is the acrylic. That's well, not going to spray because uh, I don't clean my nozzles. Nope, that's acrylic mixed with water is what that's supposed to be, but that's not... Ooh, paint's gray. Let's do a more liquidy one, see if that does better. If it does, and you don't have the fluid paints, all you do is you just add some water to it. It'll, you know, dilute the color a little bit, but that's okay. All right, let's see. There we go. That worked nicely. That one went straight, but that's okay. We're gonna live with it. Wasn't too crooked either, so that's what that one looks like. We've got that larger pattern of the. We have no blue on here. We have green, orange, and brown. Yeah. Well, paint's gray. Won't hurt anything. I'm just using these lines to line up my paper. And then just press them down because I know there's not as much on there, so it's fine. And the paint's gray is it's it's like a blue black, I suppose, is is what you might call that. This one has the background, and then it's got this medium kind of a thing, and let's just go all over with it. Try to get off whatever is on here. So it was just a little bit there. Could use a little bit more. Let's. Spread some more on there. Eventually, what happens with this piece is the paint starts to peel off. It's kind of fun. It kind of looks cool when the paint starts peeling off. All right, there we go. That's good. Do I want this corner? I kind of want that corner. I know. You don't have to be all, I want that corner kind of person. Or you can be. Uh, oh, this one's good. This one's got browns and oranges and creams. I think a little Payne's Gray would be marvelous. When I say a little, I mean a little, like a tiny, tiny bit there. I see some wet here. should be able to pick some up. Hmm. And I might even be able to spray that with water because it's not totally dry. And we'll see what's on there. So I don't mind some overlapping, but I do kind of want to hit the areas that are more not having anything on them. 
oh yeah that got a lot it makes it uh different too and because you're putting it on acrylic it's also you know dried acrylic paint which is kind of like plastic it's also gonna um take longer to dry smudge a little bit more but it's still kind of a cool look so we have a medium pattern and a small pattern i could bring in a larger pattern on this if i wanted to in fact a really good one once it dries would be like one of my big flowers um, or if you have like leaf stamps, like if you're going for fall, full on fall and you have leaf stamps, this, this would be the time. We have a large, a small-ish, and we have a lot of rounds. So you know what? We're just gonna bring in some of that. It's an all, oh, got more all over than I expected, but that's okay. It still works for me. But that's about, I mean, if I do anything to this, I might add a little bit of gesso just to push it back just a little bit to make it more background is what I might. But that's another thing. That's the thing. I have to wait for that to dry first. Uh, this one, the print is kind of small. That's kind of medium. I'd be taking a chance doing this. But you know me. I'm all about taking chances. You don't know unless you try. You don't know if you like something unless you try it. And that did definitely got all over. But that's okay. A little gesso on the brayer will push that back just a little bit. Um, and make it more background but even so it's still background you cut this into smaller pieces it's it's gonna be great Believe, just trust me trust the process all right this one also I just really I like paint all right this is gonna be a little bit crooked but that's okay my knife so we'll just I can always if it bothers me too much I can cut off the edges to me but then yeah um, I can push it back with gesso if it bothers me too much. I did get that crooked. That will bother me a little bit. But that's okay. We're trying to let go of perfection. But even so, let's try to get that on there straight, Darcy. Just better, better for our brain. So the more I do it, the less gets on there. And when it hits like the plain gesso back there, it hits different than where it would hit paper or acrylic. So that one is super subtle. There's just a little bit there. Or oh, is that from before that might not even be from now that might be just a little bit here and there and there so maybe I don't know because sometimes I use this and pressed it into the paint so it's hard to tell for texture you know but anyway we got the the big circles the tiny little squares and then there's another but there's another big pattern in the back too but that barely shows but the the words show a little bit and that's more of a medium pattern are you sick of hearing about patterns yet all right, so, so uh, stencils was the next layer and stamping. So, you know, if you're mass making like I am, just go through your stack and add some stencils and some stamping um, if that's what you want on this layer. If you're on the first layer, you can start with stencils and stamping and then you could do some scraping paint on there. You do it how you want to do it. Um, and next time we are going to push back some layers on the ones that are a little too busy for us and uh, add some layers to the ones that might still need a little bit um like this one could use something but also it's fine as it is this one it's fine as it is or it could use a little pushing back um also i haven't done any stamping or stenciling on that one yet there are a few on here that still need they still need a little something. They haven't had much done to them. So I haven't done all my papers yet. But, you know, I'm going to give myself a little leeway. Because I might think of another layer that I want to put on those. Oh, here's the other ones. I'm like, I know I did more. I'm trying to show you the ones that I worked on during this video. Just a little review. And uh, just a reminder too, you can use your 12 by 12 papers, your 8.5 by 11 papers, scrapbook papers. You could just use, you know the, the, call it the old ruled paper you get really cheap at the thrift store or really cheap when school's starting? You can use that. Uh, use junk mail. Use book pages. Use what you have. Use uh, Amazon packaging, paper bags. Any kind of paper can be used. And then use what you have. Don't go out and buy anything. If you want to use inks and you don't have inks, water down some paints, acrylic paints or watercolors, and just use your brush or whatever, or even your fingers, and just splatter it on there. Add some water. It'll spread out. Smush it with another piece of paper. Um, it's all good in the neighborhood. If you don't have bubble wrap, 
um, do you have a stamp that has circles or a stencil with circles? You could use that. Um, if you don't have stencils, uh, go grab some leaves from outside and spray around the leaves. And that would be cool. There's all kinds of things that you can do using what you have. I am a total use what you have person. At the same time, I will also promote PMRtoStudio.com because that's where my stencil designs and stamps are sold. And, you know, I have to learn to promote myself better. I know I'm not really great at it, but I try. I do try. Like this one is, this This is one of my stencils, just FYI, my designs. Which is nice because then if I want to use these, you know, digitally, I can because that's my design. Carrie and I both feel the same way about that, Carrie the Crafter. We're like, we want to design our own stamps and stencils so we can use them in digitals if we want to because that's fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. That was layer number two, kind of sort of. Just also remind you, these layers can be done at any point. They, can, even though it says layer one and layer two, they can they're interchangeable, interchangeable layers. So I'll see you in the next video. I'm trying to keep these not too long, but this one ended up being long. Um, sorry, not sorry. I know some of you like the long ones. Anyway, I'll stop rambling on now. I hope you guys have a delightful day. Love you.